here to experience virtual reality at Gazelli Arts House. Let's find out what it's all about. So my name is Mila Skarova and um, what inspired me to find this gallery was, uh, this was what, six years ago now, was the lack of commercial art galleries which um, are accessible to a wide audience through you know the educational program that we put on here through the diversity of the shows that we have here so that was the basis that that the gallery was found on our opening tonight is enter through the headset too it's the second part of a show um, which basically puts together or exhibits artists working solely in virtual reality. So this whole the whole inspiration came from uh, our online residency called Gazelio, which was launched in October 2015. So we've invited since then on a monthly basis artists working in digital medium. And Rebecca Allen is our joining artist now, the one that is our September resident. I'm here with Rebecca Allen. How are you, Rebecca? Very good, thank you. So tell us, how do you um, hope your exhibit will affect spectators? Well, I think virtual reality as an art form is actually something very different. The idea of immersing yourself in another reality is, is powerful. That's why I moved. I've worked with digital technology and art for many decades now, but with these new VR systems, you're able to, do, to truly immerse people inside another world. And it not only affects your visual system, but you can feel it in your whole body, which I think is a different way of understanding art. So tell us, what does it mean to you um, to be a resident at Gazelli? Well, they have a, a program where they bring in artists for a month and I'm the artist for September. What I'm going to be doing is talking a lot more about the virtual reality work I do and putting up images and uh, not just of this work but I'll have images, VR images from another piece and hopefully it'll just give people more exposure to what artists are doing in virtual reality and women artists as well. <laughs> so tell us, how different do you think the world would be if there were more women involved in virtual reality? Well, I've, as an artist, working in technology, different kinds of technology so long, I've been very concerned about that. And I've even made games um, with the in intention of not having violence. Because in fact, doing shooting things is a very easy kind of interaction it's it's to me a lazy interaction you can do so much more with interactive media in virtual reality and games than be violent and i think if more women were doing this we would see such different types of art forms coming from games and virtual reality so i'm here with jocelyn and Katil. how are you I'm good, thank you. So tell us, um, how do you hope your exhibit will affect spectators? Well, the piece itself was originally made for a festival experience, so it's supposed to be married with uh, live actors and an installation. So in that sort of situation, the experience is supposed to really confuse you about this world that we've created virtually and also the, like, the um, reality that you're in and how, how the two mix. Um, so here it's obviously completely taken out of its comfort zone and it was never really meant to be in a gallery but now it's here so I'm not really sure what I want people to take from it but it's really nice to see what people are saying when they come out of it. I'm here with Ruth Gibson, co-creator of Man A, which explores the relationship between figure and landscape. Tell us, Ruth, how did you get involved in it and how did you become a VR? A VR artist? Um, I started working with Bruno and Martelli um, quite some years ago, actually, a number of years ago. Um, and I used to be a dancer. And one of the things that I really um, enjoy about um, working in VR is the fact that you can make up worlds and the dance that's in the Manet project is all motion captured uh, dances and improvised dance. And 
if you're a visitor or a player or a viewer of the work, you can actually walk onto stage and you can be amongst the dancers. And this really is a primary thing for me, for, for people to have different experiences. And yeah, and to be surprised and have a bit of joy and wonderment, really. So how important is it that artists embrace technology? Um, I would say that I think it is important um, to a degree. I think because everyone, especially like younger people, are becoming so much more integrated with technology, like half your life exists in this like non-existent place, um, like say like the internet and stuff. So I think it's important to consider it. You don't necessarily have to embrace it. I feel like if you force yourself to embrace it in an art form that you're not used to, or say you're like a painter or something, then it might take away from what, what you're trying to say, but I think it's important to have it in your mind as a subject and a topic that is important. Um, and obviously really good to experiment with it. Um, but I think embracing it means more than just being like, I'm gonna make a VR thing. Oh, I've seen this thing, I'm gonna make a Facebook art thing. I think as long as it's considered and you embrace it, then it's still relevant. And I think that's what art really is. And how important do you think that um, artists should embrace technology? I think it's very important. And in this medium uh, that we're talking about, I suppose in many ways, it's important that vo the voice of the artist is heard um, and the image is seen when actually VR is an, an uncontested space and is yet to be colonized. Um, unfortunately, it could well be colonized by the big companies. And because of that, I think it's extremely important that artists um, have a say in this, this area. This is certainly an interesting use of technology and I'm inspired to see more exciting applications of virtual reality in the future. <laughs>